Squares, tell me where you at? Your motivation guy is back. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. I'm so pumped up. You know, let me ask you this, man. How many of you guys have been playing Fortnite since season one? Be honest, come on. And how many of you have just started during chapter three? Okay, so there have been so many changes over the years, and while you may have your favorite POI on the current island, there have been so many landing spots that have been considered the best, the cream of the crop. So let's just take a moment to relive some of our greatest landing spots in Fortnite history. We gotta do this. Hey, but it's time to sit back, relax, and get some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Y'all, let's get this going. All right, guys, so Pleasant Park was an OG landing spot, which first appeared in the very first season of Fortnite. It also appeared again for a majority of Chapter 2. It made so many appearances, and with good reason as well. All right, so Pleasant Park was always a good place for chest. However, its size and layout made for many interesting plays. You know, players could just drop down and instantly just start looting their choice of house relatively undisturbed despite the drop traffic. You know, the openness also allowed for more fights to commence when players went out in the open. You know, as Fortnite continued to update, and players began to get the hang of building, Pleasant Park also became a really good place to find a vehicle or collect quick mats. Okay, so POI are only as good as the player landing on them, right? So click on the link below and visit ProGuides.com for some pro-level coaching. Learn new strategies and optimize your drop spots so you can be the first to get your hands on some game-winning loot no matter how the map changes. All right, speaking of OG Fortnite, there was one POI which was really popular back in the day to the point where everybody just kind of wanted to land there or just knew about it due to the live events. I'm talking about Loot Lake. Okay, so back then, Fortnite was still pretty young, and while somewhere were still trying to just master the building mechanics, others just tried playing Fortnite like standard shooter. So Loot Lake gained popularity for being close to the center of the map, but also relatively undisturbed area. Okay, so players who landed here first, they had a smaller playing field that was surrounded by water, which at the time was something you couldn't just swim past. While Loot Lake was considered one of the best places to land by players everywhere, it probably wouldn't pass as a top tier landing spot in today's meta. For starters, I mean, players know more about loot spawns now than they did in the past so the misconception that loot lake has special loot wouldn't be as prevalent today also the logic behind landing at loot lake usually summed up to this place is surrounded by water so others won't land here and if i land here then i'm gonna get all the loot you know, Polar Peak is another Chapter 1 landmark, which was highly coveted back in the day. Why exactly was that? Well, despite having a high elevation, it was actually the location of the Infinity Blade. Anybody remember that old mobile game? Well, back in Season 7, the Infinity Blade could be found on Polar Peak, making it the place to go if you guys wanted one of the most powerful weapons in the game. You know, some consider the Infinity Blade broken due to its various health and shield buffs with good reason. You know, just having this weapon in your inventory, I mean, it could just guarantee you a win most of the time, as long as you didn't do anything dumb. Okay, so Neil Tilted is now next on our list, and, and while it never reached the exact same fame of the OG towers, it had plenty of reasons to land there. You know, aside from being a new version of Tilted, it also introduced the wind tunnels, which were great, uh, and it was just really cool for rotating in different directions after landing. This same wind tunnel concept would later be used for the UFO crash landings in Chapter 2 Season 8. All right, guys, now for the question of the day. With so many different updates and themes, what kind of POI would you guys be interested in seeing in the future? Are there like any that you just love to see and just make a comeback leave your answers in the comments section below all right, Lazy Lake was a fun chapter two landing spot. Once again, I mean, this was a chaotic spot to land, but also, I mean, it could be quiet if you just knew where to drop. Lazy Lake was like always well populated with plenty of low and high buildings to loot. For those looking for a more secluded location, but still close to all the action, the house across the small lake nearby was always a good place to really loot up, stock up on the fish, and then hit Lazy. Chapter 2 Season 5 introduced players to a one-off POI that came and went within the span of a season. However, while it was present on the island, it was a fan favorite. Hunter's Haven was the temporary base of all the bounty hunters collected by Jonesy. With some high elevations, it was perfect for picking people off from the natural high ground. Not only that, but the inclusion of the IO guards and the underground base, I mean, just also a good place to take down some NPCs for guaranteed loot. Hunter's Haven was almost always populated, so it just saw plenty of action. Whether you landed there at the start of the match or were just passing through during rotations, you almost always encounter somebody to fight. Due to so much action, you know, you would see loot scattered across the grass from all the players that would get eliminated here. Good times. Before Covert Canyon or Command Cavern were even a thing, we had the Grotto. And as far as landings go, I mean, it had plenty of perks if you were willing to get your hands dirty. The Grotto was introduced in Chapter 2, Season 2, and it was home to one of the season's most overpowered weapons. Ladies and gentlemen, Bunch of Grunts Army. I'm talking about the mythic minigun carried by Brutus. This thing really packed a punch and made it totally worthwhile to risk your neck to even get it. Even if you didn't get the minigun, 
There were plenty of chests to fill up your inventory as well as Chapa in a later update. Now, you could just drop Grotto and just make the perfect getaway towards any other POI after you finish loading. Okay, so chapter three brought many new things to the table, including POI, gameplay mechanics, and weapons. Thought the chapter was still in its early stages, there was one POI which many players absolutely loved and still love. All right, man, this is the Daily Bugle. This POI is not only a great homage to the Spider-Man comics, but it also is a proven time and time again to be a fantastic landing spot. During season one, this spot housed many web slingers, which made it the perfect POI to drop and rotate out of. Being one of the taller POI, it also served as a replacement for Tilted, and how close quarters everything was. To top it all off, the abundance of fishing spots in this area, whew, it just made it a very lucrative spot to gear up. As if Daily Bugle couldn't get any better during the early stages of season two, it was also located directly under a blimp, which meant more players dropping in the area, more ways to rotate, and even just more loot to take advantage of. Although these things at the Daily Bugle have somewhat calmed down, the POI is still considered a favorite and it's still a shame to really see it get replaced in the future. The other absolutely fantastic landing spot, guys, that we've seen uh, pop up this chapter is Chunker Speedway. It's a fairly popular landing spot nowadays due to its abundant chest, harvesting spots, and vehicles. You know, finding a proper vehicle for rotation is always important during early game and cars, you know, are the main transportation, right? So having them ready to use and fully equipped with the Chunker's tires is a perfect way to start the match. All right, finally on this list, guys, is possibly the greatest POI ever made. With plenty of loot and very interesting layout, when it first came out, you probably already pictured it in your mind. I'm talking about Coral Castle. Nah, we're just kidding. <laughs> but we all know that the POI popped into your head when we started talking about the best, right? Okay, you guys ready for this? I'm talking about Tilted Towers. Okay, we all knew Tilted was gonna be on this list, right? I mean, after all, who doesn't love a good fight at Tilted Towers? When Tilted first dropped during Chapter 1 Season 2, it became a wildly popular for what it brought to the table. I mean, Tilted Towers was a huge POI with tall buildings and plenty of loot, and this means players can land quicker, start descending, and loot buildings as they fight other players in close combat. But all that would mean nothing if players, you know, didn't land there that game. You know, this is one of the few POIs that could have up to 20, sometimes even more players dropping in during early game. This made Tilted a hectic place to land, and players loved it, especially those that wanted to practice their combat skills. Since then, Tilted Towers has been destroyed, revived, and destroyed again. Not to mention, revamped into variants such as Neo and Gotham City. Most recently, during the current season, Tilted made a temporary comeback when the snow from Chapter 3 Season 1 melted away. This season, we watched as the IO laid waste to the beloved landmark. So sad. All right, guys, before we wrap things up for today, don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for some pro-level coaching. Come in from any skill level, man, and just come out one step closer towards pro-dome. But you guys tell me where you at your motivation, guys. Back, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy, man. And also, feel free to leave a comment and just let us know what you would be most interested in learning more about. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, so remember, fans will always have what they consider the best landing spots of all time, perhaps because it was heavily populated or just really fun to play. So go out there and just find a landing spot that you can look back on and just say it was your best spot. Once again, this is your friend, your guy, the one who believes in you is for you each and every day. Keep going, keep grinding. Your motivation guy. I'll see you soon. Peace.